Hey guys, it's been a while and finally it's time to fulfill your requests. And in this lecture, I'm going to start off with explaining you Budapest Gambit for Black's point of view. Uh, one of most exciting openings with black pieces. Uh, I also got like such a big number of requests uh, by probably dozens of you who asked me to do this video and uh, it just took me some time to play a little bit this gambit because I haven't practiced this Budapest gambit in the in the past so much. Uh, last couple of weeks I've been playing a big number of blitz and even rapid games and I can say that my experiences were very various. In the beginning uh, I was like a little bit excited and uh, it really went well then I had like some uh, ups and downs and right after that after I fixed like a couple of uh, main variations I believe that now I'm just doing fine with this gambit but I'm actually not even that important it's way more important for you to actually do well with this gambit so let's get started Budapest Gambit, how does it uh, appear? So after like d4, knight f6, c4, e5, d takes e5 and knight g4. As you know, one of my most successful videos on this channel uh, became Fyrovich Gambit, where I explain you how to play with third move knight e4. It's time for this way more popular and at the same time uh, way more sound Gambit knight g4. So, what's the point? Black is just intending to get a pawn back and to take the pawn on e5. Uh, also, when you take by knight this pawn on e5, you just want to attack the pawn on c4, you just want to uh, take control of some central squares, but at the same time you lose control of the d5 main square. This first part, I'm just going to uh, try to explain you how should you play against side variations against the Budapest Gambit. Then I'm going to have like a second part. Well, I try to explain you how to play against the uh, fourth move by white, knight f3. And then third part will consist of the fourth move, bishop f4 by white, which I also consider to be the main variation uh, against the Budapest Gambit. So let's get started and let's check all those uh, side variations. Let's just first take a look at those who play queen to d4. They threaten to capture the knight, and they also defend this pawn on e5. Uh, playing this gambit, uh, I faced this queen d4 move a couple of times in blitz games. It's bad. It's simply bad because you play d6. d6 uh, opens up this bishop, he defends the knight, and you also want to get a pawn back on uh, e5, taking by knight e5. They have to take. And surprisingly, you play knight c6. Of course, you don't have time to take by queen because we don't want to exchange queens if we're down a pawn. We don't have time to take by bishop because g7 pawn is hanging. So we play nice developing move knight c6. Uh, this variation shows you the true spirit and nature of this uh, gambit uh, because you don't only sack one pawn, but right after queen e4, bishop e6, if they take on c7, you've just sack the second pawn. I saw like two tournament games here. Of course, you're going to capture uh, with queen on c7, but believe it or not, you can even give with queen d1 check. And after king d1, knight f2, get a queen back. They have like a broken pawn structure, broken castle. It's nice compensation for black. Not even compensation. Black is even slightly better. After queen c7, let's just briefly take a look at this position. We have like three minor pieces developed. We have like queen on c7. They have um, kind of misplaced queen on e4. I would say centralized queen, but this is more like exposed queen than centralized. And after knight c3, <coughs> long castle. Uh, we're threatening to play like, uh, I don't know, I mean, knight b4. Uh, then we also have like idea queen d7 with the idea of bishop f5, with the idea of um, knight b4, with the idea of f5, uh, with the idea of like so many other things. After e3, queen a5, uh, threatening like bishop d, bishop b4, uh, and after bishop e2, knight f6. Put the queen back there, 
knight b4 only move uh, to place this queen is on b3 you go with knight e4 very nice fork king f1 and knight to d3 for example uh, black is like so much better king is weak uh, they have like all these minor and heavy pieces talking about where it's uh, misplaced on the back rank queen on b3 is not entirely good piece uh, if they take, we do. You, we even have time not just to capture by work. Of course, we're gonna capture by work, but we also have like knight c5 capturing by knight or work afterwards. Anyways, position is great. All things considered, those who play queen d4, uh, they're just compelled to suffer after d6. E takes knight c6, queen e4, bishop e6, and instead of d takes e7, uh, which wouldn't be like the best idea, I'll show the game between. Uh, two guys from the Netherlands, the guy played knight f3, this guy captured by queen, and he was actually preparing himself for the long castle. After knight c3, long castle. Uh, at the moment, we don't threaten anything, but we we just want to play uh, the moves I explained you previously, like uh, knight b4 or queen d7 or f5 straight away. After e3, I analyzed uh, here uh, that game in the game the guy played knight f6 but I, I kind of like my knight on g4 because it keeps threatening this pawn on f2 also knight f6 queen b1 and queen d7 what a nice move you just threaten a very nasty bishop f5 you also have knight b4 afterwards they can hardly fight against this bishop e2 bishop f5 e4 you take and when they take bishop e4 they can cover themselves with uh, bishop d2 because we take and on e4 uh, and they actually uh, lose that uh, piece on d2 and after king f1 work h to e8 this was the game between Hoxma and Duven uh, played in Netherlands back to 1990 what a nice activity by black and believe it or not white already resigned king was weak uh, knight was threatened queen d1 at some point with mating ideas and this guy just resigned I analyzed after e3 instead of knight f6 what happened in the game f5 and after queen c2 you just have f4 uh, would like fully break uh, into the center in case they just try to somehow desperately complete development we take take and play queen c5 position is so much better even if they play f takes c3 we play queen c5 and uh, we're just down a pawn and they have a broken pawn structure is post king we have open the file uh, compensation and activity is on our side instead of queen d4 they can go queen d5 i also face this move a couple of times the approach is just the same with one slight difference the queen on d4 was threatening knight on g4 this queen doesn't threaten uh, but it still defends pawn on e5 although the queen on d4 could find uh, could find itself under the attack after knight c6 this one cannot find itself uh, after knight c6 under the attack but we still play d6 uh, they can't play anything else but knight f3 for example and you play c6 this is a little bit better version in comparison to the queen d4 line because uh, queen d5 variation uh, just uh, takes away c6 square for the knight and after like queen d4 uh, knight takes e5 it's a, that's a nice move. I like it uh, because it looks like uh, we're just uh, kind of forced to exchange these queens and to go into kind of a, a normal type of position. No, that's not a point. Uh, the best move for them is knight c3, play knight d7, and position is very nice for black. We have bishop e7, short castle, queen a5, black, rook e8, black is good. Uh, but the point is, what happens if that move knight takes e5? Then you just go with the queen a5 check. And uh, you actually have a very good and very pleasant choice of uh, capturing by pawn on e5 and capturing by queen on uh, e5. No matter how you actually capture, position is absolutely fine for black, and I believe that black easily equalized this game. <clears throat> by the way, if you hear something in the background that's my bird actually my daughter's bird so uh, i hope you're gonna be full of understanding uh, just uh, focus on the analysis and the quality of the analysis don't pay too much attention on the bird um, 
I also played when I was younger. Uh, I was trying to figure out what's so wrong with a movie Six by White. E6 is nothing. I mean, we can recapture by deep on. Uh, we maybe break the castle, but the game is just normal. Uh, we can capture by f pawn what people usually do here, uh, develop the dark square bishop somewhere and play short castle, which is a very nice system. But according to the engines, you should be going with the bishop before. And when they play bishop d2, you capture, queen captures d2. And once again, we have a sweet choice of capturing an e6 by d pawn, like d takes e6. And after queen d8, king d8, which is absolutely normal and equal, and, you know, in like five moves, equalizing with black pieces is just so nice. And in case of, like, you hate to play end games or queenless type of middle games, then just go with f takes e6. Knight f3 castle, uh, this position looks absolutely fine for black. So... I don't want to bother you with these moves like queen d4, queen d5, e6. Uh, you can absolutely uh, realize that none of these moves cannot guarantee anything to white. Uh, then they have an option of playing a move that I faced a couple of times online. And people like to do it massively. It's e3. Uh, queen threatens to win the knight. And when I take on e5... They massively played against me this knight h3 move. Uh, for the first time about this variation, I heard from my ex-student, uh, woman grandmaster, uh, Sandra Jukic. So she told me knight f4, knight c3, and control of the light squares and the center. I have to say it's quite interesting. And I, I, I kind of like this variation at first glance with the white pieces. Uh, simply, uh, white has like full control of the center, they have like full control of these light squares, and the central square d5. I'm not saying, according to theory, this variation is like one of the top reactions by white in this position. <clears throat> I'm just trying to say it looks fine. Uh, and at first glance, uh, looks that white has slight but a long lasting advantage. Uh, in case they after e3, knight e5, don't play knight, h, uh, knight h3, but they play, for example, f4. I'll shoot a game uh, played by uh, almost 2700 GM from uh, Belarus, Kovalev, who played knight g6, knight f3, and played bishop c5. Uh, this bishop c5 idea against the uh, compromised pawn structure by white with the pawns on e3 and f4 is very common in these situations. Why? Because whenever they make castles, so think about castle uh, in like a near or just long future by white, you always are going to have like a possibility to take by knight on f4 or to have that tactics as an option. Also, bishop on c5, after we do castle and play and transfer this rook to e8, we're going to go just after the potentially weak and a backward pawn on e3. After bishop d3, we just go with d6. Uh, that's a nice plan, and uh, that that could be that could be a very very nice system. Uh, after bishop d2, just watch out not to give them like too much space on the queen side with b4, knight c3, and castles. Here you have an absolutely normal position. I believe that they made a clear weakness on e3 uh, when they decided to play f4. And black's position looks fine. You have control of the dark squares. You can decide whether you want to play c6, queen v6. I mean, at some point, not here because of knight a4. Whether you want to play knight c6 with control of the dark squares, like e5, d4, b4. Maybe knight a6, like in King's Indian. Maybe moving the bishop back to <coughs> like a7 and playing knight c5 afterwards. Then you have a possibility to play rook e8, going after the pawn on e3. Maybe even some sacrifices on f4 at some point. Black just looks good. Uh, I'll show the game uh, between these two guys. So f4, knight g6, and this guy played normal move, bishop d3, bishop c5, knight c3, castles, and a3. Uh, Kovalev played rook e8. The guy played queen f3. 
played d6 to complete development and to open up the light square bishop and after bishop d2 played knight h4. This guy found himself already in difficulties and I usually used to say uh, there we go guys take a look at this one and try to find tactics for black. Five, four, three, two, one and hopefully you found it bishop takes a3. Bishop takes e3, bishop takes e3, rook takes e3, and of course, uh, bishop is hanging. They can't capture by queen because of knight g2 fork, and uh, they actually continue to play the game. And Kovalev eventually won the game. So after a3, where they threatened to win the knight, and after we capture an e5, practically they can only play one move here. It's knight c3, and I'll explain you why. Uh, most of people like to play knight h3 because they just, you know, I found like many, many games. And I'll show the game between uh, Grandmaster Herais Hidalgo from Spain and who else but original and uh, a great tactical player, uh, Shak Mamajar playing black. So I like the following plan by Black. I used it already a couple of times in Blitz, and it didn't. In all the variations, it worked perfectly fine, except in one. And I'll show you which one, and I'll show you what was my actually mistake in those games. So just like I told you, I actually um, announced this uh, video um, earlier, but I didn't want to do it because I just wanted to play like a um, couple of. I believe two weeks this variation, uh, but the point is, uh, the point is, I just wanted to fill it a little bit better and to present you all these ideas in a smooth way. After like knight h3, Mamajar played against Jerez Hidalgo d5. Very interesting move and concept by Black. I like it a lot. First of all. You remember that I told you that in most of these variations with knight h3, knight f4, and knight c3, simply in this line with a3, and connected variations, they just have like full control of the d5 square. Well, that's not going to be the case here. Uh, simply after d5, we open up this bishop and threaten the knight on h3. We sack the pawn. Uh, practically, Queen takes d5 happened in this game of Mamajar, and I don't think it's a good line. I lost one game. Uh, I played, of course, queen f6, and we should be always playing this move. Because queen f6, we defend the knight, we avoid queen exchanges, and we just want to play c6. That was my mistake. The guy played knight f4, and I played knight c6. Looked fine at first glance, because I had some knight before ideas, but eventually, I wasn't too happy. Uh, although, you can play... Uh, c6 is the move, by the way. c6, because it drives the queen away from the center. But that's like secondary idea. Mainly, we don't want to give them possibility to fight uh, for d5 square for the rest of the game. Although, let me just show you knight c6 that I played in one game. I like that a lot. And uh, it worked really, really well for me. Uh, after a3, because it stops knight b4, and I think that most of guys will play like this, you play g5. You kick this knight away, they have to play knight h5, you play queen g6. They have to move it back, and now you play bishop e6. And everything goes smooth and with a tempi. Look at this, you just, I don't know, you maybe want to place this bishop to g7, maybe c5, maybe even crazy bishop b4, rook h2 e8 h5 h4 as well i mean all these ideas just look almost decisive by black uh, that's why i'm telling you i like also knight c6 that i used in that game but c6 is what mama jar used so we have to uh, look for his moves and games when they won bishop f5 bishop e2 knight bd7 you just want to play long castle knight c5 and take like full control of the d file and the d3 square Knight c3 long castle, short castle, and knight c5. Look at this beautiful uh, control of the center, uh, control of the d-file. Look at these three minor pieces. I believe that Mamajara was already more than happy 
uh, with uh, like the looking of his game. After queen e1, h5, e4, this is a desperate attempt by this guy to get a pawn back in order to get back some activity. My major captured the pawn, played queen a5, threatened the pawn on a7, and probably he didn't expect queen f5. Queen f5 was a nice move. He threatens knight f3 check, discovery, to win the queen. Queen takes, but I have to admit that most of us wouldn't play this move. Queen f5. Uh, probably without any thinking, most of us would play uh, either king b8, either king b8, or, but okay, bishop e3 looks like uh, dangerous action, and uh, maybe a6. But that's the strength of this guy. He played queen f5, queen a7, bishop d6, and this bishop is not going to be used only for defense in case they give you check. But also, he's going to be using this bishop for attack after knight g4, or maybe, uh, yeah, so knight g4 in those positions. After rook d1, bishop b8, queen a3 captured there and played rook d8. After queen e1, Mamajar played knight g4. Like a full a win of the black strategy. Look at the activity of the black pieces. Uh, he just wants to play bishop a7 afterwards, threatens the knight, this knight here, threatens to win an f2 and to also second d1, and uh, here I see Hildalgo uh, didn't feel like old. Actually, his position was already difficult. My major of sacked the piece, bishop h5, took on f4, uh, first made this intermediary move, captured, and after queen f2, played queen g5. Point was that he couldn't play like bishop g4 because of f5, and he just had to resign the game. Just like I'm telling you, uh, this variation with e3, knight e5, and early knight h3, in my opinion, is not, not that it's not good, but actually gives black this interesting possibility with d5, uh, which could, which could mean some problems for white players.